We're going to go live now to Canberra. The Deputy Opposition Leader, Susan Lee, uh, there to join us. Uh, yeah, it, it does put things into perspective, doesn't it, uh, Susan? But uh, we do have a, a big economic story that's taking place here in Australia too um, that's affecting so many homes around the country. Rates up again, Philip Lowe, hawkish, with more to come. What's your response on where that's at at the moment? Well, Pete, firstly, our hearts go out to the people of Turkey and there'll be many Turkish Australians and those with families, friends and communities that they love over there whose, you know, hearts will be stopping this morning with distress. So, I mean, those scenes are, are, are pretty awful. Um, on to interest rate rises, as you say. This is really sobering news for Australians, particularly those with mortgages and... Uh, it just goes to show you will always pay more under Labor, the ninth consecutive rate rise, with Philip Lowe warning that there will be more, families now having to make tough decisions, even families with second jobs. You know, what do we not spend money on? Do we not take a holiday? You know, do we not undertake that expenditure for our family, for our future? It's all going on the mortgage and with 800,000 Australians coming off fixed rates, there could be a jump of several percentage rate in their mortgage payments, which adds up to, you know, ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars mm. a year are some of the figures I'm hearing. So as I said, it's really sobering news. Yeah. One of those rates though uh, started under your government though. Uh, so if you blame the current government for the same thing, doesn't this just show that governments are powerless when it comes to this? Well, I heard the Treasurer say that yesterday. I thought it was a pathetic response. Uh, the rate rises started it's at accurate, a certain though. date. Well, yes, but we are seeing the ninth consecutive rate rise, and that's, set, that's eight rises under this government. More importantly, we're seeing no economic plan. When did you last hear the Prime Minister actually accept the pain that ordinary Australians are feeling, or even talk about it, or even suggest an economic plan to do something about it? Uh, I was in, as I last spoke to you in Melbourne, I think, Pete, and we had some roundtables with small businesses. At those roundtables were food relief organisations. We've heard that Woolworths is increasing its food relief effort by over 20%. And I spoke to some amazing community organisations on the front line there, and they're just giving you that story, quite mm. frankly, that people are running out of the money they need to pay their normal household grocery bills. And remember, too, when it comes to small business, they've often mortgaged their family home to start the business they love, that they work on, you know, 24-7, that means so much to them. Their house is mortgaged because of that business. So there is real pain facing Australian households yeah. today. And I don't see a response from this government or even a decent recognition you will always pay more under Labor. The Governor, Philip Lowe, has made some extraordinary errors throughout the course of this time. Now some have claimed that he's too aggressive when lag time should be taken into account. Do you have full confidence in the RBA? Look, I'm not going to criticise the RBA. Um, the government can cast around and find people to point the finger at, and I'm not suggesting it's actually criticising the RBA either, although I some parliamentarians are. Uh, you know, these institutions in Australia have stood us in good stead, the independence of the Reserve Bank. What I see here is a government that fails to recognise the pain that its economic policy is causing, the pain to ordinary Australians, or even acknowledge those broken promises. Because remember, when they came into government, they made these promises that you would have cheaper mortgages, that you would have cheaper power prices, that no Australians would be left behind. When under Anthony Albanese, everything is going up except your wages. The Greens made a bold claim yesterday to override the RBA's decision uh, using the RBA Act. Would you support that at all? Uh, not at all. And uh, we often see some extreme claims from the Greens and I think we'll just leave that one okay. exactly where it is. OK. You mentioned uh, that uh, the government should be doing more uh, because ultimately Australian households are the ones who get punished for all of this. So what is your answer to this? How do you fix it? How do you make life easier? Well, the most important thing is for the government to have an economic plan. But uh, in my portfolio area, Pete, which is industry and small business, uh, they're taking the National Reconstruction Fund legislation, they're rushing it through the parliament. Another example of rushed legislation. It's a $15 billion fund. 
it's not wise expenditure. These off-budget vehicles have been recommended uh, against by the International Monetary Fund, and it's another example of what we saw during the election campaign when Labor took more spending than we did to the election and is not showing the restraint or the sensible economic management that is required. Now, this fund, if, uh, you know, if, if, if they manage to rush it through, which they're trying to do, will immediately release $5 billion, and then the remaining $10 billion will not require any parliamentary scrutiny. Uh, yes, we need a manufacturing policy. We had a very sensible one, which industry actually uh, respected, recognised and understood our sovereign manufacturing capability needs in this country. So, uh, you know, I can talk in detail about this fund and I will in the parliament, but it is just one example of Labor being careless with money and always... Uh, knowing that in the background, if they don't have enough money, they can come after yours and uh, their attack on the stage three tax cuts, which is just around the corner, is another example of that. OK, uh, Susan Lee, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, Susan Lee, live from Canberra, thank you so much.